Hare Krishna. So here's a question about life, love, right? So someone here is saying that um, in order to find a life partner, dating seems the right option. Arranged marriage seems scary. You do not know who you're getting, going to get involved in with. But then some people are opposed to the idea of dating. Maybe they are from very um, traditional or cultural families for whatever reason. So he's asking, you know, the choice to explore and find love. So let us see what the Shastras of scriptures have to say. By nature, the Jiva, the spirit soul, is looking for love and has a desire to love, right? To be loved and to love others. This is the exchange that the Jiva as well as the Paramatma, the Atma and the Paramatma desire. Both God and the individual spiritual so, spirit soul desire to love and to be loved. It's a natural desire, right? So, but unfortunately, when we come into this world, we are conditioned by so many uh, material things like body and race and gender and cultures and languages and so on and so forth that we get covered up by selfishness. So in this world, to actually find love as what we, however we want to define it, is almost impossible. Shri Prabhupada mentions the closest you can find to true love in this world is the love, the unconditional love that a mother has for the child. Right? Mother just wants to serve and have nothing to expect in return. So that is the closest you can find pure love. Other, other forms of love are just usually manifestation or permutations or derivations of a form of you know, infatuation or a form of liking or just a form of lust. So in that sense, there's actual no love in this world. In a book uh, by His Holiness Bhaktivika Swami Maharaj, he writes, How Jivatma cannot be satisfied by another Jivatma. One spirit soul, because the spirit soul is so small, cannot satisfy another spirit soul. Right? Both, all the jivas are known as chutta, always fallible, where the Lord is known as achutta, infallible. So for the small, minute parts to try to satisfy each other, it's impossible. They can find satisfaction in the supreme whole. So the only source of satisfaction is God. As long as the jiva is connected to God, they can find satisfaction. But jiva trying to, you know, find satisfaction with other jivas, it's not possible. So then, pure love or real love is not there in this world. It's just a manifestation. Then we have to understand the concept of marriage then. So Shastras mentioned marriage is called vivaha yagya. Vivaha is marriage. Yagya means sacrifice. It is a sacrifice. Why is it a sacrifice? Because you sacrifice something for gaining something higher. So what are they sacrificing? Let's see. So vivaha yagya is a process where two individuals, boy and a girl, decides that yes, we want to get married. For what? For the betterment of their own spiritual lives. It is like a contract. It is like an understanding. It is like a partnership that we need each other to move forward in life. Right? And whatever... Uh, compatibilities are there with each other, we can work with each other, we can live with each other, we can function with each other, so that we can help each other. This is what Vivaha Yagya is. So their compatibility is then checked using many different methods, right? like whatever compatibility charts or whatever is there. And basically that is what marriage is. It is a union of two people and their families that they can happily, peacefully work together, functionally live in society, to regulate their desires, whatever sensual desires may be there, desire for, you know, economic improvement, desire for money, desire for wealth, desire for children, desire for um, physical uh, sense, you know, satisfaction, whatever it may be. But that all that is brought into a scope of regulation and with that they become very peaceful. The minds and heart become very peaceful and naturally... The result of a good vivaha yagya is naturally both the individuals become very spiritual. That is a natural result of a good match or a good marriage. So now let's go back to the question here. The person is saying dating. So dating is never there a concept in the Vedic culture. Why? Because dating basically means you are going after people 
looking at the externals and trying to see if you match now the thing is that externals change so kids at the age of 14 15 when they look at each other because of the modern day media everyone is trying to find a girlfriend or a boyfriend thinking it's the in culture to be cool right there are sometimes unfortunately movies and songs that promote these things that you should get a girlfriend no you should try to find but you will find based on what your eyes your ears you'll see this color is skin color is good this height this look but things can change just ask yourself for real that if you say or oh, you think you love this person tomorrow if that person gets an you know acid attack and the face is destroyed will you still love the person unconditionally the same way will you have the same feelings for that person so just merely going on externals being attached or attracted or infatuated by things which will change is not a very reliable thing the in the concept of vedic marriages vivaha yagya what is matched is the psychophysical nature the blueprint of their what is called as a swabhav their nature right the characters are matched these things don't change your external your body height your weight your look your skin color your hair color the amount of hair you have on your head everything is going to change right so therefore this dating is nothing but simply infatuations and that is a danger because our infatuations what we like and what we don't like keep changing today you at a younger age you know people are crazy they like they like someone who's rough and vigorous and wild and challenging but later on at a certain age they need more stability in life they like they don't want such people so things change so generally i give an advice a little differently to boys and girls so for those who are listening this audio message if you are girls this is the advice to you dating is not a very respectful thing you know you're being passed on you're passing yourself from one person to another passing yourself from one person to another trying to find so called mr right right and uh, it is just going to make yourself more messy and yourself less respected you are seek is trying to see or understand or uh, appreciate or like someone who you you can't even understand yourself but you you know it's very precarious and in the process you get your heart and your minds all messed up and so it's a better respectful thing to do than just you know trying to go out and look how many people will you look after there are billions of people in this world maybe the person for you is in another continent how many people can you go around looking for so it's not a very respectful thing it makes you a very degrading thing and um my advice to boys okay that please do not start this it will be a very cool thing guys usually think that we have nothing to lose girl has more something more to lose in the relationship guys have nothing to lose so they get into a relationship but guys you think uh, 20 years down the line when you are a father you have you have a wife and you have a child let's say you have a daughter and you come to know that guys are trying to go after your daughter trying to court your daughter right travel relationship with your daughter how will you feel or oh, you come to know you marry a girl and the girl says that you are my you marry a girl and the girl says that you know you are actually my mm, sixth boyfriend i had five guys before <laughs> that's your wife you know so the, all these kind of things are very messy uh, so one should be a bit real about it this dating in one sense it's like legalized prostitution it's very messy you know if you eat something in one plate can you imagine you taste a little then you keep passing the plate around hey why don't you try why don't you try you also try a bit you also try then he might come back to you again who knows so so definitely the vedic scriptures shastras any respectful cultural people would not encourage this culture of dating because there's a saying you know that a woman never forgets her first love so the first person they think about they like it always may not be a good choice but they never forget it and that can create a lot of havoc in the future lives must especially after she gets married she has her own children still that thoughts of that first person will dwell in the mind it's very messy right so why contaminate our contaminate our heart contaminate our consciousness with all this it's very difficult then to become spiritual when one has such messy baggage so if one can be very real with oneself that if one sees one needs that oh yes i would like to settle down that, that's that's wonderful and now there's right ways to go about it the wrong ways to go about it is going through all this relationship breakups makeups 
and proposals and courtships because honestly anyone who goes through this whole scenario this whole game very hard to be god conscious impossible because the whole mind and senses are engulfed or enwrapped about how to attract the opposite gender how to maintain that attraction of, from the opposite gender how to actually win over the heart and it's a huge game and a person becomes messed up with it it's it's just a foolish fad of society and uh, we should avoid getting involved in all these things so my advice to both boys and girls uh, young people of society please don't get dragged away by all these things there's nothing cool about it if one is really honest that one feels by one's nature one wants to settle down then be a man you know own up to it express your ideas and there's the right ways to go about it we have shastras bhagavad gita mentions krishna says that there's nothing against there's nothing wrong with marriage but do it the right way right not this kind of dating hare krishna just an addition on the comment that arranged marriage is scary risky well dating is also scary and risky there's a saying love is blind marriage is an eye opener many people who enjoy the companionship dating and all that but after when they get married sometimes they admit that they think they married a different person only so because during dating it's always you know we put on a persona an image to impress and marriage life is you know you who you are who you are so sometimes that you draw an image of who you are not and that perception is uh, you know become fooled by it so in 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 either ways you know there's a, there's a risk in everything but um, to just trust our senses our perceptions what we think is the right truth our own likes and dislikes based on externals that is kind of a greater risk there is a there is a there is a way where what is called as a calculated risks which is given in the shastras of a uh, way to get married the proper way to get married that is known as a calculated risk